I don't like coming second to anyone, and if someone underestimates me, then that's usually at their peril. Andrew Comanche, which is now back in Australia, thanks to John Winnie. It's no doubt that the Comanche is one of the best 100 footers in the world. As soon as Andrew Comanche is in that right weather window, she's unstoppable. sort of prove that that wasn't a one-off and we'd love to do it back to back, um, but we know it's going to be a real challenge this year. No one messes with the Oatleys in the Sydney to Hobart, they're out there to win. When the racing starts, everyone's pushing it. I rate all the other boats with huge respect. Any of the boats are capable of winning. The stakes are so high, there's so much that can go wrong. One wave, one broken mast. Have we lost the engine? Boats don't stop going faster, so the edge is as far as you're prepared to push it. The team has to be united, otherwise the whole thing falls apart. The wedge between 200 foot is going at a fast pace with nowhere to go. Did not see them till way too late. You make a mistake, this thing will eat you. It will bend you over in a heartbeat. And it's not one I've ever done that at some stage you haven't sort of thought, oh, you're going to make it. But I know it's going to be treacherous and challenging and scary at times, but listen, <laughs> bring it on. We're not going to the start line looking to come second. When we go to water, we're going to battle. And that battle is about to begin. That was a gripping sneak peek by Heckler and Fremantle, who've been documenting a new team at the helm of Andu Comanche as they battle for first place. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Seven's coverage of the 77th Rolex Sydney Hobart. I'm Mark Beretta, along with Peter Shipway. And Shippers, you've done 31 of these. Five times you've been first across the line. But it's not all about line honours, this great race. No, it's not, Mark. They'll capture the imagination, the four maxis today and all the way to Hobart. But the real battle is for handicap honours, and that's the uh, uh, trophy that all the small boats want to win. And they can do that against the bigger boats. But really, I think this afternoon is going to be absolutely beautiful sailing down the coast. Everyone's going to get away from Sydney in very good time. But the real battle will take place down the Tasmanian coast, where it's going to be fast and furious. Now, you know these starts. You've seen a few of them. Sydney Harbour's put on something special today. This is magnificent. It's one of the great days in Australian sport, no doubt about it. And today, it's a glistening harbour, and we're going to see a very reasonably quick exit out of the harbour. But boy, once they get outside the heads, all systems ago for a quick race to Hobart. All right, let's get an update on those conditions now and talk to a man who knows this race pretty well too. He holds the race record on Comanche. Jimmy Spittle is with us. Jimmy, how's it look down there? Morning, Mark. Morning, Pete. And everyone at home to this year's Rolex Signey to Hobart Yacht Race. Well, that fog that was out here this morning has well and truly cleared. And what's left is a picture-perfect day here. Nice little 10 to 12 knot nor'easter. That's forecast to build as we make our way to start time, but it's looking like an epic run down the coast. Now, Barretts, you mentioned that record run we had on LDV Comanche, and I still believe it's under threat. I think any one of these four could get it done. A big driver to that will be what happens tonight and whether they maintain that stronger, fresher northeasterly as they get into the following day. But all in all, looking like a fantastic race. Can't wait to see how it plays out. Hey, Jimmy, thanks very much, and great to have you with us as part of the team as well. Uh, Emma Friedman is on board Andu Comanche. Best seat in the house right now for this Rolex Sydney Hobart start. Emma, what's it like on board? Well, what a morning. Excitement is building. It is super high right here on Sydney Harbour as we gear towards start time. Been so lucky this morning to be on board Andu Comanche, one of the four Super Maxis who are taking part in this year's event. And this morning has all been about making sure that this yacht is packed to perfection. They've got all the gear that they need. And the 24-man crew have been briefed about what lies ahead, all the conditions they can expect over the next 48 hours or so. In terms of conditions in Sydney today, 
you couldn't ask for much better. 28 degrees, the sun is shining and the wind's absolutely perfect for sailing. Excitement is high. The atmosphere out here on Sydney Harbour is electric, to put it lightly, and everyone is just full of anticipation as to what lies ahead. This is all about teamwork, camaraderie, and we cannot wait to be bringing you the start of the great Sydney Hobart. Ah, uh, Emma, we are all envious. That is a magnificent spot to be. Thank you very much. Peter Shipway, this is how the course looks. Yes, four separate starting lines and then different marks at the heads to equalise the distance between the starting lines. Then down the coast, they're going to be running in classic northeasterly conditions across Bass Strait. Fast and furious there, then it gets fresher from the north down the Tassie coast. So they approach Storm Bay around Tasman Island, 40 miles to the finish. There's the Derwent River and then the finish off Battery Point, Castre Esplanade in Old Hobart Town. And uh, unfortunately all good things must come to an end. Emma Friedman uh, just getting off uh, Andu Comanche at the moment. She won't be going all the way south with them. She has had a wonderful time covering it for us on board this morning so that we could show you what it is like and capture a bit of that magic on board, one of these great maxis. But I think, I think Emma's had a pretty good time, shippers. As you know, you've done this race 31 times. You know how magic it is. Yes, yes. It's, it's an exciting time, certainly with half an hour to go to the, the start or a bit less. Um, nerves are starting to tick in now and uh, we're going to see a, a really good race to the heads. Not only that, but also all the way to Tas Tasmania. I think that uh, it's really up for grabs this line on this prize, as is the handicap prize. So here's your mega wall just showing you uh, all angles of the action here on Sydney Harbour at the moment. And it's the most magnificent day on the harbour. And good to see, uh, and there they are. Hamilton Island Wild Oats just there for you a moment ago. Good to see them back this year. It is, and there's the weather that we're expecting today. 10 to 15 knots, the classic nor'easterly sea breeze, a low swell, an outgoing tide, and a lovely 28 degrees temperature. Everyone will enjoy it from the competitors, the spectators on the water, and the spectators around the headlands of the harbour. And shippers, that's a pretty good race start forecast, is that that will make for good spectating today? It will, and today, as the afternoon wears on, it'll be beautiful sailing conditions, but the conditions and forecast is to get fresher as they go south fresh across Bass Strait and then fresh to frightening down the Tassie coast. The, the Norwester could get up as strong as 35 to 40 knots before a southwesterly change hits the fleet and the smaller boats will suffer in that. The big boats and the 60 footers and above, they'll be in Hobart before that change hits. You're looking at the all blacks of this race, of the ocean racing world, Hamilton Island Wild Oats, the most successful yacht in the history of this race and the most successful crew. And uh, it's so good to have them back this year. It really means something special to this race when they join us here and have a look at that beautiful view. And welcome to all our viewers who've been enjoying the Boxing Day test. Great to have you with us for Seven's coverage of the Rolex Sydney Hobart on a spectacular day on Sydney Harbour. In fact, Peter Shipway, honestly, you, you just don't get better days than this, simple as that. Yeah, that's, it's a wonderful day, and uh, we're just there on one of the race favourites, Andrew Comanche. And interesting, all four maxis at some stage have won line honours in this race. Hamilton Island Wild Oats, nine times. This race is his 16th race to Hobart. Andrew Comanche's won it three times. Blackjack won it last year, and has won also as, in 2009 as Alfa Romeo, and Law Connect. She won in 2016 when she set the race record, but the race record is held by Comanche one day, nine hours and 15 minutes. And I think it's going to be very close this year for another record run. So that means they'd have to be in Hobart tomorrow night at about 10 o'clock. Boy, that's quick. It's amazing, isn't it? You almost can't fly there that quickly. Here's Law Connect, also another big contender in the Max season. Great to have the four maxis together and, and finally locked in battle. This is really the heavyweight showdown of Australian sailing. It certainly is. And the uh, conditions today, will they'll be on the breeze down the harbour to the turning marks at the harbour. They'll reach out to the outer turning marks and then they'll put the bows south and then the reaching sails will come up and the spinnakers will come up and they'll be in a really fast slide. And they'll be in Bass Strait probably by midnight tonight, the leaders. So you can just see how quick this race is going to be. Here's the defending champion too, Blackjack. Very strong crew. One, uh, sorry, uh, the Navigator is uh, a very strong uh, Spaniard yachtsman, Juan Vila. And the boat, of course, named after Jack Brabham, former Form Formula One world motor racing champion, a very good friend, an old friend of Peter Harburg. 
the owner of Blackjack. Mark Bradford will be the skipper. Strong crew, Bruce Clark and Anthony Nostner from Australia, 20-plus Hobarts. Adam Bieschel aboard, Simon Daubney and Dean Phillips from New Zealand. And here's the other extreme, Maluka, the smallest yacht in the fleet, 9.0 metres, crew of six on board, uh, owned by Sean Langman, skippered this time around by his son Peter. You couldn't get a bigger contrast or a smaller contrast, <laughs> whichever way you want to look at it. The oldest boat in the fleet, Maluka, is 90 years young, wow. built in 1932, a timber boat, a gaff rig boat. She was the only gaff rig boat in the fleet, and she has done very well in previous Hobarts. She was eighth overall in 2006 but boy she's going to have a long trip to Hobart this year and here's his father Sean Langman aboard Money Penny one of the favoured boats a Reichel Pew 69 footer built in 2008 she won the Gold Coast race uh, this year retired unfortunately last year very good crew Gordon, Gordon McGuire on board a multiple Hobart winner Matt Humphreys comes aboard as the navigator Okay, well, there were 22 handed boats in this race this year, and one of them is Karawong, uh, which is the second smallest boat in this fleet. And on board is Kathy Veal and Bridget Canham, and they join us now. Kathy, you've had a look at the forecast. Uh, how does it look to you? How do you think your trek south will be? Um, I actually think it's going to be uh, quite hard work. It's uh, running in heavy breezes, tough on um, two handers because you've got to just be really attentive to steering the boat. And I guess the big question for us is, um, you know, how long are we brave enough to keep our spinnaker up? What's what's the biggest thing on your mind at this point? What are you what are you focusing on? Uh, gee, probably the start and getting out of the harbour. And we're just coming up to our start line now, so getting a little bit of a look at the angle of that and uh, the large number of other boats that we're sharing the start line with. So, like, very much the pre-start and, and the harbour part of the race. I'm uh, trying to think of it in terms of, well, we're just going for a bit of a sail down the coast just to <laughs> keep a little relaxed about it. All right, listen, Cathy, we wish you all the best. It's a, it's a brave race for you too, and, and safe, safe sailing, and we look forward to seeing you safely in Hobart. All the very best. Yeah, look forward to getting there safely too. Thanks, Peter. Yes, the second smallest boat in the race and uh, sister ship to the 1981 winner, Zeus. But here's Antipodes, an interesting boat, 72-footer, uh, owned by Jeff Hill. Jeff was aboard Love and War when they won the race in 2006. Experienced crew, Michael Heenan, will be the skipper at the start with Bradshaw Kellett in his ear as a tactician. She's uh, very quick downwind, so these conditions will suit Antipodes. And uh, I think as they get further south as the breeze increases this boat will do very well she's got a very good handicap rating and she could surprise many people in the handicap race it is a beautiful day on sydney harbour as you can see that's the view from the top of the sydney harbour bridge looking out towards sydney heads there is mark richards the skipper of uh, hamilton island wild oats which you remember were not part of the race last year they set out last year's race and they are back in a big way and could they possibly get a 10th line honours win that would be remarkable pete they certainly could get that wind. Uh, wind. The weather looks as though it could be in their favour. They've got Stan Honey, the world-renowned navigator on board, but we, there we are on Andu Comanche. And interestingly, That's Ian Matt Murray, Hill. who has been on Wild Oats for all her 15 trips to Hobart, That's now Matt comes Hill. aboard Andu Comanche oh, sure. as the sailing master. And you will notice there I that the crew are wearing black power. armbands. That's in memory of Ian's mother, June, who passed away three days ago and also in memory of Herman Winning's close friend, Matt Munting, a legendary base jumper who died earlier this year in very tragic circumstances. So we wish the boys well on that boat as we do on Law Connect. Christian Beck, he's been twice runner up in the race and he was not board uh, when it was won in 2016. Here's Celestial. Well, here's an interesting story. She was provisionally first last year but got uh, rubbed out and a penalty was applied to her after she finished and was relegated to second place after uh, an infringement during the race when she didn't have a radio on and the race committee protested her and she was relegated from first to second amongst great disappointment. You're watching Seven's live coverage of the 2022 Rolex Sydney Hobart. Great to have you with us on a beautiful day in Sydney Harbour. We're back with more right after this.
Uh, it is a beautiful day on Sydney Harbour for the Great Race South. The 2022 Rolex Sydney Hobart, and take a look at that, it does not get any better. Absolutely superb. 109 yachts will start this race. There are 20 in the two-handed race, eight international entries, and you're taking a look at Andrew Comanche, the race record holder. This is a fast, fast boat and a slick, slick crew, and so are these guys. Mark Richards at the helm of Hamilton Island Wild Oats, the most famous yacht in this race. Nine-time line honours winner. Could they get a tenth today? It is highly likely over the next couple of days they could get to Hobart first. But at the moment, the favourites tag rests with these guys on Andrew Comanche. And there is Ian Murray in the black jacket. who have spent many, many years, 15 of them, shippers on Wild Oats, has now moved across to Comanche. Outstanding yachtsman, and he will be calling the tactics down the harbour for young John Winnie, who will be at the helm. What's the start about? That's the voice we can hear of Herman Winnie. And that's the view of South Head, in the South Head, looking back towards Watson's Bay. And you can just get the magnitude of the fleet here of spectators and yachts and racing yachts alike. A great corridor down the middle of the harbour for the yachts to tack their way towards the turning marks. And the spectator fleet hopefully will behave themselves and stay behind the laid marks that let, their, let them know where they've got to be. And we're just coming up now for the 10 minute gun to be fired by past CYC Commodore Noel Cornish, who navigated the CYC through the COVID times. There it goes, 10 minutes to go for the great race to be underway. Oh, we can't wait to. The spectators uh, around Sydney Harbour, one of the great things about this race, they estimate about a million people end up watching from both the, the north and south side of Sydney Heads here. It's a great location. Let's go down to a man who knows this race inside out as well. He was on board Comanche when they set the race record. Jimmy Spittle. Jimmy, how's the tension down there near the line? Yeah, you can definitely feel it building. You're seeing all the boats now going through their pre-start practice, getting to grips with the starting software. A lot of them have a almost an iPad where they'll read that and that'll help give need to kill time whether they're early or they're late as they approach the start line. We've got, we've got four start lines here. The breeze is up around 12, 14 knots. Initially it was out of the east. It's actually rotated around to the north. So first big decision for these boats after they start is what side of the channel will they take because they have to split the Sound Pigs Reef. Right now, the majority of the boats seem to be favouring the eastern side of the reef. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out in the next 10 minutes. Uh, Jimmy, where would you want to be and, and where do you want to be on the start line for today, do you think? Yeah, right now, I like the eastern side. I'm seeing a little bit better pressure there at times. But again, when you're sailing one of these Super Maxis, I can tell you it is really challenging. All you want to try and do is just find some space, get off clean, and then just get clear of the heads. Anyone behind the lead boat is going to have to contend with a huge amount of spectator wash. There are literally I'd probably a thousand boats out on the water here. Once they get to the heads, there's no more exclusion zone. It's, it's open slather. So, yeah, it's going to be a real washing machine in Sydney Heads, especially for the boats that are starting on the start line further in, closer to the bridge. And, Jimmy, from where you are, does it look like one of the biggest ones we've seen? It certainly, from above, looks like there's a more spectator craft than we'd normally have. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I mean, and I'm talking all boats. The big super yachts right down to the families out in the tinny doing a bit of fishing. So, yeah, it's about to get, it's about to get very, very exciting for these smaller tinnies. Oh, Jimmy, we love it, mate. Stay right there. We'll be back with you. It's uh, a fantastic sight, is at the moment. 109 yachts setting off this year. And, and Peter Shipway, good numbers. That Great to see the race back to full strength. Yes, it is, Mark. They've got... Um as Jimmy mentioned, 24 boats will be on the first starting line. There's four starting lines, 24 on the first. They're made up of all the bigger boats. 36 yachts on the second starting line, 31 on the third, and 18 on the fourth starting line, which is way back near Point Piper on the harbour. So they've got a lot of dirty air to get through those smaller boats before they get to the heads and turn out to the sea mark. There's yeah, quite a story here on uh, Stefan Racing. Lisa Seifert, 
uh, 36 years of age, an, an international model, diagnosed just six weeks ago with breast cancer. Her dad is on board this boat, and she said, there's no way now I'm going to miss this opportunity. So she is on board. Uh, she's had a break in treatment and jumped on board to be part of this great race. So good luck to her and the family on board. Stefan Racing. Chippers, there's an old saying in this race that you, you can't win the race in the harbour, but you can certainly lose it in the harbour. Well, that is dead right, Mark. I think that's, that's, that's a great statement because we've seen over the years, remarkably, three times boats that have been provisionally named the winner have lost on, on, uh, dis on protest after they've been provisionally listed as first. In 1953, Wild Wave won line honours and she was disqualified for an incident at the start. 1984, Drake's Prayer was rubbed out of provisional handicap honours. And then in 2017, we'll remember Wild Oats got rubbed out because of an incident with Comanche at the heads with Jimmy Spithill was sail sailing, steering Comanche. So you've got to get out of the harbour clean. That's the main thing you've got to do. However, they've now introduced a rule that if before you get to Bondi, if you have infringed in the harbour, you can do a 720 degree turn outside the heads to absolve yourself of that penalty. So that clears the way to go to Hobart with a clear conscience. Take a look at Money Penny from above and Sean Langman, a great name in this race, been there many years. And that gives you uh, an idea of the size of the fleet. There goes right in the middle of the frame at the moment. Uh, Hamilton Island Wild Oats, probably the most famous yacht in this race. A nine-time winner of Line Honours. We're coming in on the five-minute gun. The five-minute gun to be fired by Richard Wilson. He was aboard Pathfinder, his father's yacht in 1971, 51 years ago when they won the Hobart race. He couldn't get across last year because of COVID, so they've invited him back this year. That's Richard in the orange hat to fire the five-minute gun in, uh, in memory of the great win he had 51 years ago as crew aboard Pathfinder. But there's the fleet. They're starting to get wound up now. There's Herman winning on the wheel of uh, Comanche, Andu Comanche. I can go above JBW, see JBW. Hey Matt, I do not have JBW, Matty. Murray Jones on the right, six times America's Cup winner, an outstanding New Zealand yachtsman, comes aboard Wild Oats for the first time in his first Hobart race, and he's in the ear of Mike, uh, Mark Richards. There's Murray there. So I think this is too early for our final. We may do one circle. Pretty light off now. The first starting line between Nielsen Park on the eastern side and Clifton Gardens on the western side of the harbour. Coffee, I got it, I got it. So we're now coming in on three and a half minutes from start and you can certainly Best feel speed. the tension building as these giants of the ocean battle for position, look for the wind, find the right starting spot. There's Ian Murray just standing coolly there, watching it all unfold. We have cameras today on both Andrew Comanche and on Hamilton on the Wild go, Oaks. All the way to Wimwood, we have to burn them off by the boundary. So that means he's wanting to start, I would think, above the other maxi so he can get across their bows it's and into the boundary. 100 foot threat or anyone? 100 foot threat or anyone? He's asking Ian Murray for instructions where the other boats are. Here's the defending line on his champion, Blackjack, Mark Bradford at the helm. Now let's see where they're stacking up. There's the, the pink hull of Stefan Racing. She's an 80 footer. She was fourth to finish last year. Coming in on two and a half minutes. Okay. Everyone would be quite tense now. And you've got to remember, shippers, this is the result of years of work for all of these crews and the boats, and they're continually refining, fine-tuning, trying to find more speed. Hey, best trim here, best trim. Where do you want to be? Holding that, that, that angle. 
Just fifty. What do you want to bake? Hello. Tell me what you want to do. That's looking from behind at all the starting lines, the four starting lines. The first starting line up off Steel Point, Nielsen Park. Looks like Andrew Camachi's up on the eastern side of the harbour. You can see the Andu on the on the sail there. There's Law Connect coming back to engage with Andu Comanche. And we've got just a minute 20 to go. Wild Oats on the eastern side as well. And Blackjack further to the west at the moment. So I don't think anyone's going to push down to the right on the western side pin mark at this stage. They're holding up towards the middle of the line, as I think Jimmy said, that the eastern side looks a bit favoured. One minute to go. Okay, okay, here comes Law Connect. Tony Mutter will be at the helm for Christian Beck. Chris Nicholson is the tactician oh, yeah. aboard Law Connect, but here we are on Andy Camargi. Do you want me to keep going high or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So much riding on the start. Come up, guys. Well, there they are, all lined up, the four maxis. And at the top right of your screen, in the bottom right, you can just see the, the starting markers there in position. That's where they're creeping up on that line at the moment with less than 30 seconds to go. Tide going out, so they'll be pushing up to the line. Here they go, the foot will be down now. They'll be wound up with 15 seconds to go. Most lured will be Blackjack. Then Andrew Comanche powering in. They're at full biff now. Big Normie Hyatt will fire the starting gun. Aboard American Eagle 50 years ago for Ted Turner. Here we go. Away and racing in the 2022 Rolex Sydney Hobart. The great race south is on. I like Andrew Comanche early and more connect. A lot of gas here, that's what Mark Richards means. They're behind a few boats, they're getting dirty air. There's Stefan racing well position. And here's Guaylo, a strong chance for handicap on us. Matt Donald's boat, the TP52. But here's, oh, now here comes Wild Oats. She's got a tack out of there. She's getting a lot of dirty air. Here she goes. She'll have to take a lot of sterns here. She hasn't got right away. She's on port tack. going to dip behind a lot of boats here. The interesting battle will be between Andu, Comanche, Blackjack and Law Connect. And a great view there of the four start lines now. Those four waves underway and heading towards Sydney Heads before they make that big right turn out. There's Wild Oats in centre of the screen on Port Tack taking the sterns of a lot of boat. She's going to get quite right, right along to the eastern side of the harbour and come back on starboard. At the moment she's a fair way behind the other maxis. Here's Zen, strong chance going across on starboard tack, another of the TP-52s, Gordon Catelby's boat. Okay, here's the battle, the majority of the fleet on starboard. These guys, these guys, these guys. There's a live Who's number 66, the former winner. Still not going here, travel down a little bit. Travel down a little bit. Okay, here we're seeing a tangle up here of these maxis. His law connects, gotta have rights here. I can't, where am I gonna go? Trouble on Comanche. We've got nowhere to go. I'm safe, I'm safe. Protest! Protest! Okay, now, when I'm clear, when I'm clear, jib now, jib now, jib now, jib now, jib now. Boy, this is close here. Protest, get a flag on there. That's fucking bullshit. Protest! Okay, we already heard a protest being yelled by Andrew Comanche. They didn't get any room to tack. Incredible drama already in this race. It is all happening and they're not oh, in the heads. Do you want to duck, Seb? Do you want to duck? I think you duck him, no? You're asking for a clusterfuck. We're going to be in a collision. Okay. As soon as we're laying that thing, step wait a little bit. Well, you can hear the, the drama and the voices of the crew, especially on Andrew Comanche. She's coming back on port. She's going to have to tack again. They've got clobbered by going in there, those bigger boats. Andrew Comanche especially, she had nowhere to tack. Whisper was mixed up in that bunch as well. David Griffith, 62-footer. Law Connect coming across on port. 
Now, it will be interesting to see if they fly a protest flag and if anyone absolves themselves outside the heads. Whoops. Careful, careful. Tensions are high. There's no doubt about that. There was a real mix-up between those boats on the western shore. And Andrew Comanche's dropped right back now. And it'll be interesting to see where Wild Oats comes out of this. She cleared herself. She got off to the eastern side. She might have a clear run up on starboard tack. We'll see her in a minute. There she is. She could conceivably lead this race now. Good work. Good work. One of the wildest starts we've seen for a while. Just, just really lock in here, guys. 72. There's the URM group. Very strong chance on handicap honours. Four brothers aboard this boat. The Johnson brothers, Anthony, Andrew, Dick and Nick. Marcus Ashley Jones, the skipper, a young skipper from Hobart on his 18th Hobart. A big chance in this race. To lure of her is Blackjack. And I think Wild Oats is going to lead this race to the heads. Down, guys. And who really got chicken winged up there. It'll be interesting, Mark, to see if they do go ahead with the protest. Jump She's up, behind Law Connect at the moment. Yep, and that would have rattled feet. the crew. It was very close. Trevor up, Trevor up. And as we said before, you can lose the race in the harbour, but you can't win it. Nice here. You can hear the voice of Mark Richards. <laughs> Even got time for a laugh. I think we're okay, yeah? Okay. You call when my helm, sir. Yeah, got it. My help. That means he's got John Winnings Jr.'s got the wheel. My helm is changed from side to side. There's Stefan yeah, racing ahead of them. I feel like I'm on the win. The little boat tacking under Blackjack. I think it could be Whisper. Big She's header. done Big very header. well. Big header. That means the breeze is heading. Going, going left as we look at it. Here comes Law Connect. She's bouncing off the spectators in the exclusion zone. She's coming across on Port Tack with no rights here. She's got to try and take a stern or three here. Well, she may claim water that she can't tack back, so she may claim water on Blackjack. This is close too. She's going to take a stern. She's across from oh. Whisper. Oh, this is close. Wow. That's about as close as we're going to take a couple of maxis. So, what we're seeing here is Wild Oats, Hamlet Island Waves, Wild Oats trying to hold Blackjack down there. Okay, they're going to attack. Wild Oats will attack. Law connects a stern of her. Here we go. Helps down. Attacking over. As they're going to attack in unison. Blackjack and Wild Oats. They will probably lead. And Wild Oats is in a very strong controlling position here. He does a good tack. He can throw dirty air up onto Blackjack. But these two narrower boats have done very well. Law Connect is starting to get rumbling now. These big wide boats. The breeze slow. northeast about 15 knots. Mark Richards, uh, probably as calm as he's ever been. Jibon, 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 Jibon. Not now. Jibon, he wants some Jibon. <laughs> but when Law Connect tacks, he'll be on starboard. He'll have right away. But I don't think he'll watch out, watch out. be able to engage Hamilton Island Wild Oats or Blackjack. But at the moment, the race leader is Blackjack. Mark Richards' grandson told him this morning, no swearing, Poppy. We'll see well, how he goes. That may be a bridge too far. <laughs> There's Camp Cove, top of screen. Travel up, travel up, keep it going. In a south head, Hornby Light. They'll go stand in on port here. And one more tack and they'll go up to the turning mark. They go to the furthest turning mark. Oh, my speed, Bill. He's telling me to hold. Keep it going. You got Nanny? There's Law Connect. She's the most eastern of the boat. She will be tacked first. There we go, to Law Connect. Someone take the helm. Get me going here, get me going here. So we'll see Law Connect Trouble tack up. very soon yeah, onto starboard. Wild Oats sailing high to try and keep Blackjack out. Trouble Blackjack's got to stay high to stay out of the dirty wind of Wild Oats. There's Mark Richards. He'd like what he's seeing here. They've got a very strong controlling position on Blackjack. Law Connect to come back. Get us going here, we've got to get going. Murray Jones has done a terrific job. Here comes Law Connect. It's going to be close. Just can't see. Let me down there. Yeah. 
Tony yep. Mutter and Chris Nicholson. Stand Nichol by, guys. Chris Nicholson, dual Australian Stand Olympian, Australian Yachtsman yep. of the Stand Year. Attack. We're in good shape here. Okay, good shape, says Mark Rich. They're clear ahead. They're clear ahead of the law, law here Connect. Here we go, guys. Helms down, taken down. Here we go. They're just going to get very light as they approach these turning marks. They get the influence of North Head. So it's going to be quite tricky now until they get to the inner turning mark. Big travel down. He's main, he's main, he's main. He's the main. Paul Westlake on the main, one of Australia's great yachtsmen. So they've got a very strong crew on Hamilton Isle and Wild Oats. She's giving Law Connect a bit of dirty air there. So they're the four maxis. They'll probably go, one, two, three, and four. The order up, at the moment, up, possibly up, Hamilton Isle and Wild Oats up, to lead Blackjack and Law up. Connect. We might hear Mark Bridges get a bit nervous now, I think, as we see Andrew Camachi tacking. Okay, my helm, my helm. Speed on, speed on. See, Blackjack top of screen just in better breeze than Wild Oats was, but here's Law Connect. Please, dip on. They're getting good pressure. See, Blackjack leaning over a little Don't bit more than Hamilton Island Wild Oats means she's got more wind pressure. So it'll be better when she tacks. Now, here's a close go. Andrew has no rights here. She's on port tack. Wind coming from the left hand side. She'll have to duck. But when she comes back, she'll be on start. There's the duck. Judgment very, very precise here. Okay, I've got it, I've got it. Nettie's got it, I've got it. He's got it. it. Means he can see the other boat. He knows how close he can go, Herman Winnie. <laughs> that is close. Still got a fair way to go to the turning mark. Hey, okay, they're fucking themselves, sir. Oh, here's a close go. Blackjack is absolutely threading the needle no, between Law Connect right. and Hamilton Island Wild Oats. Wow, Mark Bradford. <laughs> wow, terrific job. Wow, that was nervous stuff. So the four the four are for in the mix. Cover down, please. Are right in the mix. Can you, can you let the Lord run go? I've got it. I've got it. The lay line they're calling, that's the when they can tack and lay the mark. I'm, gonna, I'm okay, okay. Okay, Law Connect Stand is going to tack. Guys. Stand by. And Mark Richards will Here tack right on their gas. Stand There's the turning down. mark. The Stand first down. turning mark for these maxis. What a race they've had down the harbour. And if it's anything to go by, it could be all the way to the Derwent River. Turning mark, Victor. Chris Link. There's Chris Links, one of the hills on the board Wild Oats. That's not their turning mark. That's the turning mark for the back fleets. Big ease, big ease. You'll see a yellow turning mark pop up shortly, right of screen. Get us on, shoot on, shoot on. There it is. For the to yeah, bottom right of your screen now is the turning mark. What a beautiful day, this east northeasterly breeze. 12 big to 15 knots, no okay. Here comes Andrew Comanche and Blackjack on starboard. And that's the turning mark, the yellow turning mark. And here's the cross. Hamilton Island Wild Oats will lead. Oh, it's tight. It's tight. Blackjack's put the bow up. She's got starboard tack rights. Oh, where's Law Connect going to go? Law oh, Connect's got to. Oh, she's going to roll the dice here. So she's going to have to tack. Watch out. Let me look. Let me, let me look. So Hamilton Island. She's got Hamilton Island. Wild Oats is going to do this. Standby attack. Okay, standby attack's the call from stand Mark Richards. Hamilton. Attack on starboard. Two short tacks. One, and then two. So they've all extracted themselves very well, these maxis, to get up to the first four places. Wild Oats, a short little tack, two boat lengths. 11 minutes, just on 12 minutes to the turning mark. You're right. Great job, Wild Oats. This is nobody. Let's go down to Jimmy Spitter. What can you see down there? Yeah, well, it's been a real action-packed time after that start, and we've seen all of these super maxis towing and throwing, going back and forwards. Strangely enough, a lot of them were back off the start line, except for Blackjack, but that actually allowed Wild Oats to get over to that eastern side and pick up a pretty favourable shift. We've just seen him turn the, the uh, distance mark right now. Great job by Wild Oats and Mark Richards, but, man, that was some of the closest crossing I think I've ever seen in the race so far. Thanks, Jimmy. Well, yeah, I think, we're doing the turn. I think we're we, do turn. I think we hit 
Yeah, they did hit. They did hit the mark. Where can I do it? So Andrew Comanche. I'm a protest. You ready? Okay, there's plenty of drama here. Look, let's look at this again. Yeah, yeah, Andrew Comanche, as the starboard tank writes. You on the other helm. You on the other helm. Okay, you ready let's to see. Turn? Ready to turn? Yeah, the, the turning mark's gone down their side. Protesting. There. Protesting. Oh, it's all happening. It is all happening. Okay, there's Murray Jones. They're clear. Wild Oats is on her way. Andrew Comanche doing the penalty turns inside the harbour. Nice and easy. That's good. They can go to Hobart, as I said, with a clear conscience. Boy, that was close, as Jimmy said. Um, these four maxes have thrown the boats around like skiffs. So that's two spins they need to do, and they'll clear their penalty, and they go on in the race. Okay, Stefan Racing's done a good job. She'll be fourth now with Andrew Comanche doing those turns. Tony Mudder and Chris Nicholson have done a good job on Law Connect, but there's Stefan Racing then URM, and then Whisper. Whisper got a terrific start, but she got herself tangled up with those maxis, or they tangled up with her. But they're streaking out now to the next turning mark, which is turning mark Zulu. That's North Head in the background. What a sight. As I said earlier, one of the great sights in Australian sport, no doubt about it, on a cracking Sydney Harbour day. They're reaching now, these boats. Sails are easy. He's the jib a little, Mark Richards says. And they're away. It's a great pace. And this is where Law Connect will come into her own. Big stability, big wide boats. That's the view of Wild Oats. No. On board with Law Connect now. We haven't, we haven't infringed. Well, we, it's a possibility we have. Yes. Okay. No way. No way. He's lane. He's the jib. He's the jib. He's the jib battler. He's the main. He's a jib battler. That's Robbie Naismith he's yelling to. The New Zealand top yachtsman on his 26th trip to Hobart. But what Mark Richards was saying to Murray Jones, have we infringed? Murray thought they might have. Mark said no. Will they do penalty turns? Who knows? It's a long way to go with that hanging over your head if you think you might have infringed. But here comes Law Connect. He's the jib. Volumes are up now from Mark Richards. He's the jib, guys. Come on. He's the main. There's Stan Honey on left for the, the white hat. Place. Okay, Law Connect is starting to rumble here. She'll be very close to Hamilton Island Wild Oaks' next turning mark. Andrew Comanche is now starting to roll. She's done her turns. And you can see already Law Connect has a second jib set up. That's their storm jib. They're a double head rig. They want all the horsepower they can get. And here she comes, this wide body boat with a lot of stability. Oh, I, I can't believe that, mate. Oh, yeah, but if they were asking us to tear... Were they? Yeah, we didn't. Were they asking us? Do you know that? No. Well, they didn't see. Whoa! Whoa! Whoa. Okay, so, protest flag on Andrew Comanche. You can What's see Justin? that red protest flag. Copy, copy. Herman winning, asking for the turning mark directions. Boy, that was tense. So they've given these leaders a bit of a jump. So here we've got turning mark here. Is Patrice. Patrice. Yeah, one of the TP-52s. Tony Kirby's charge, the former hooligan. And then 32 comes along next. And we have her is Zen. That's the... Another TP-52. All the TP-52s will be in this mix now. 52 Quest is Quest. Two-time winner of this race. She won once as Balance and once as Quest. It has a terrific record in this race. She's been third once, second once, two wins. Michael Green, the sailing master. And here's Law Connect. She will lead at the second turning mark. She has really driven hard in this breeze now, which is freshening outside the heads. You can see the white caps. Law Connect, there's the turning mark. Turning mark, Zulu. Now, will Hamilton Island Wild Oats do some penalty turns? That's the question. We don't know, but... Yeah, this is, I, I, I disagree with mate. Let's ease. Let's ease, ease, ease. Let's go. I think Murray Jones, the tactician, is saying maybe we did infringe and perhaps we should do the penalty turns. Mark Richards is saying, no, I don't think we did. Well, boy, I think I'd be doing the penalty turns. But anyway, here we go. And 
Blackjack third, and then Stefan racing fourth at the moment. Oh, what a race start it has been. Hope you're enjoying it wherever you're watching. Back with more from the Rolex Sydney Hobart right after this. Jib up. Why did we pull the jib down, guys? Oh, good. Sorry. I couldn't see it. Let's fail. Deploy the jib. Deploy the jib. Deploy the jib. Come on, guys. Deploy the jib. Deploy. Shut up. Just deploy the fucking jib, mate. Deploy the jib. Let's go. Jesus Christ, guys. Just ease. Let's deploy. Deploy. Mate, shut up, shut up, mate, shut up. I don't give a fuck, mate. You're gonna have to. Let's fill, let's fill, let's fill, let's fill, fill. Woody! Red furling line. I'm just keeping us VMG. You tell me when you want to go. Just over 20 minutes into the 2022 Rolex Sydney Hobart, and boy, have we had some yeah, drama. They should have ducked them. They should have ducked them, mate. No, the other guys could have stuck them. They could have hit the duck. They could choose to pull us to 10. I honestly think we're in trouble. Okay. Okay. Let's fail. Let's fail. Fail. We're going to do a 720. Mate, seriously. Seriously. Get the jib up. Why did we pull the jib down, guys? Oh, good. Sorry. I couldn't see it. Let's fail. Deploy the jib. Deploy the jib. Deploy the jib. Come on, guys. Deploy the jib. Deploy. Shut up. Just deploy the fucking jib, mate. Well, that gives you an idea of the emotion and the passion yeah. and uh, the excitement on board Hamilton yeah. Island Wild Oats, Pete. Yeah, well, drama are plenty. What has happened there is like they there, thought know. they may have infringed in the harbour. Murray Jones, the cool-headed tactician from New Zealand, has said to Mark Richards, maybe we did and we should do our penalty turn. So they're doing the penalty turn. Mark Richards wasn't in an agreement. He said, no, I think we're OK, but they're not taking any risks. And this is the smart thing to do. To take your penalty turns now and then away you go. So we've seen Andrew Comanche do penalty turns, but now we're seeing Hamilton Island Wild Oats doing two penalty turns. Deploy, deploy, So now they'll be on their way. Deploy means they'll undo their reaching sail. They've jived now. Bang, and they'll undo their unfurl their reaching sail now. So they're on their way with a clear head now. But you can see Law Connect now has been handed back the lead. Let's deploy, guys. 
a f or further lead. She was a leader at the last turning mark, and she's marching away. Hamilton Island Wild Ace now getting their reaching sail unfurled after doing the penalty turn, or two penalty turns. Get the mate on, please. And I think Murray Jones was very cool there. I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you. Let's go, guys. That's good. Mark Richards Come wasn't on, sure on. whether it was the right thing to do or not, but he's, the he agrees please. now. They've done the right thing and they'll push the on in the race. So the order is Law Connect, Blackjack, Andrew Comanche, Stefan Racing. Oh, and uh, Sorry, Andrew's back in fifth place. They've still got that protest flag flying. Only if it's a problem. Okay, now they're starting to wind up. They'll be 18, 20 knots shortly, if not now. You'll see the power of these boats. She'll be putting some water ballast in. She can carry six tonne of water ballast to give her more stability. I've just got to... Yeah, but i just got to keep myself going with these waves. Lower. Got you, got you. That is an incredible sight, isn't it? When the I, spectator fleet is enormous this year, more. and and of course that just makes good, giant right? chop out feel, outside the heads, which the particularly the smaller boats will have to deal with as well. Toy box two from the Middle Harbour Yacht Club. Unfortunately, didn't make the start last year. Broke its mast just before the Hobart race started. Just behind them is Mayfair. Mayfair, a Rogers designed 46 footer. Coming up, Quantock just going through top yeah, of screen. Yeah, this toy box, Ian Box's 46 footer. These boats are just tacking now to go around the turning mark. They're assigned turning mark in the harbour. It's a lovely day, the breeze, beautiful nor'easter. And the forecast is a very interesting forecast. We talk about that now. The long range forecast is they'll have lovely conditions down the coast today. 20 knots building slowly and as they get to Bass Strait tomorrow it's going to get up to about 25 to 30 knots approaching Tasmania for the leaders they could get up to 30 to 35 knots from the north or northwest and shippers for the first time this year the two-handeds are in contention for the overall trophy the Tattersall's Cup that's right and here's Sunrise here's a very interesting boat she's from Great Britain she won last year's fast net race she was second in the middle sea race won a division in the Caribbean 600. She's highly fancy. I think she'll be just a little bit too small to get overall honours, but Adrian Kahalan aboard, one of our most celebrated female skippers, as we watch the bow of Comanche go down and point towards Hobart. All right, let's go down to the water with Jimmy Spittle. Yeah, hey guys, we're just over here off North Head, and I can tell you, as soon as you get out here, there's a big increase of breeze. We're up to 18 to 20 knots now. All of the big boats have gone. I mean, they're in the horizon. We just had the first of the two-handers sail past us and heading to that distance mark now. But, man, what a lot of action we saw. Really surprising to see how hard those bigger boats were pushing it. Two out of the four Super Maxis choosing to do penalties. I think that was a wise decision by Hamilton Wild Oats because I thought they were at risk. Jimmy, did you actually see that, that incident waves, and what happened? Through. Yeah, we did. I mean, it was very, very close. We are right on the distance okay. mark there. And I think Murray Jones really showed his experience. I mean, he's one of the best in the world, up to six America's Cup victories. Very, very good sailor. And I think he was a calming influence on the boat there and said, hey, guys, it's a long race. Let's do our turns and then let's get on with it. So I think that was a very wise decision. And, and as was with Andrew Comanche, that clearly they were in trouble a couple of times. But now they're free of all the carnage. Pin their ears back and send it down to Hobart. <laughs> send it. We love it. Thanks, Jimmy. So things have quietened down a bit on Wild Oats. They've uh, done their penalty turns. They've got their reaching sails up. And they'll probably be going for inner reaching sails as now Andrew Comanche starts to really wind up. On the 18 degrees of heel, so I can't go any lower. Uh, it's a great time now as things start to settle down. Of course, we've still got the majority of the fleet to turn out of Sydney Heads and way. make their way south. We've got plenty more action coming your way. Stay right there. We're back in a sec.
Sometimes the waves just are doing that to me. Hard oh, copy. See, it's just a lot of the waves. Hey, um, okay. Kyle, I want, I want someone to go down and check everything downstairs. Yeah. Make sure not sinking or something weird's happening. Come on. I need power here, guys. I need power. I need power, but good time. Are we trying, what are we trying to do here, guys? Hey, let's see. Let's see. We're just going to go ring the door a little. We're going to go ring the door. Are we VMGing now? What are we doing here, Murray? Are we VMGing now? What are we doing? I need best trim, please. What do you want me? But do I ditch, do I ditch keel or what do you want? It comes and goes. We should start theme Jane, guys. Oh shit. Okay, cool. Day on Sydney Harbour, you're looking at Bondi Beach there as the fleet makes its way south after what has been one of the most spectacular, controversial, colourful, exciting starts we have seen for a long time in Sydney Harbour. There's your leader, Law Connect, leading them at the moment. This incredible fleet of follow vessels joining in and following along as they head down the coast. There is Blackjack and Hamilton Island Wild Oats, and then we'll come across on your screen and see Andu Comanche. Just coming up. Justin, show up. <laughs> what an incredible start, Peter Shipway. Have you been. changed the table? Nathan D. It certainly was. Peter, get rid of that guy. Just get rid of that guy. They're worried about the spectator boat I'm still just living in his way. causing wash and wake and upsetting just the balance of the boat. Him. Couldn't yeah, be in I a worse I position. Little ones down. But they're going for a triple head rig on. Andrew Comanche, you see that orange yeah. sail, that's the storm jib. That's yeah, the yeah. smallest jib. They've got Every time two sails out. set in front of that. Most boats will be going for double or triple head rigs. But now it becomes a race. Whether the stability comes into play, the big wide that's boats, there. which will suit so them, know. or whether it's what's called a VMG run, which they can try to get as deep as they can. There's a couple of little boats coming around the mark now. That's Saquant, number 50, Kim Jacobs' charge. And bow line just coming through. Bow line. And number 10 is Jocasta. 104 was uh, the bow line. 33. That's Schutzbar. What a story this boat is. That's a stalwart of Sydney Hobart shippers. And the owner, Bruce Taylor, has been second. He's been third. He's had 22 divisional placings for six divisional wins, but he hasn't been able to crack it. Could this be the year? Just maybe, but I think... He'll be too small. Secret men's business, 83. And there's Bacardi tacking in the background. 
28 Sydney Hobart. This is her 29th trip. No boat has done more. She was second to Love and War in 2006. Here she comes. There's Bacardi. Doug Peterson design. Solid, robust boat from Victoria. Still some of the smaller boats working down the harbour. It's just amazing how far the big boats have stretched out. They're down off Bondi or even south of Bondi. And it just reminds you, Pete, about the overall battle. We talk about line honours, but the overall battle is such... It, it is the one to win. Yes, as we watch Sintara dipping the stern there of... Uh, I think I can do it on field. Mitty. She's a two-hander. Don't forget there's 22 handers out here as they're trying to get these sails on uh, Andrew Comanche. They lift everything by halyards. They're just too hard and heavy to lift by manpower. But yes, the battle is really for the handicap honours, the Tattersall Cup, and that's the real prize. And I think the weather, the way it is, looks as though the 60 or 50 footers, TP 52 footers, could figure highly in that race. I would think Caro and what uh, would probably highly favour it, along with Warrior One and Guaylo and Celestial, maybe URM and Whisper. Well, Law Connect is our leader at the moment. Let's go down and check in with Jimmy Spittle. Jimmy, uh, most of the fleet sort of heading out the heads now. Yeah, most of the fleet have now cleared their heads of, looks like, what, three boats left just making their way to the first distance mark. Looks like Maluka and the Army boat, the Gunrunner, which has a lot of our servicemen on there. Interesting point, they actually have a, a trophy between themselves and the Navy uh, on who gets down there first. Now, the last two years, it's been won by the Navy, so I'm sure the, uh, the Army lads on Gunrunner will be trying to prevent that hat trick from happening. Yeah, come on, Army. Hey, Maluka's fantastic, isn't it? What a great story. 90th birthday too, Jimmy. Yeah, unbelievable. Uh, it's really well sailed too. I've actually done a bit of sailing with both Sean and his son. Uh, very, very, you know, experienced guys on the water. Obviously, his son drew the short straw. His dad took the bigger, faster <laughs> boat. But, man, what an amazing little boat. And no doubt, they, they're actually in the running for the overall for the Tattersall. So it'll be interesting to see how they get through, especially when they get to the southerly. You can see the gaff rig there on Maluka, and then down to leeward of her is Karawong. Second smallest boat in the race, only girls crew, the two girls, two-handed crew on that boat. And there's Andu Kamachi, she's starting to wind up now. She's going a little bit to seaward of the fleet, which is a better speed for her. She'll put the bow up a little bit, you'll see the narrower boats have got bow down. But she's on triple head rig, and that's the sight from North Head as we look back Every boat that's now around the turning marks are getting spinnakers up and reaching sails up. And Law Connect holds a narrow lead. So the great race south is well underway. We've got more coming up for you after this break.
77th Rolex Sydney Hobart is underway and what a wild start we saw in Sydney Harbour but things are settling now as they pick up great pace and you're watching one of those most spectacular scenes you will see down the east coast of Australia. On the right hand edge of your screen is Law Connect our leader. There is Gunrunner, the uh, army boat, just heading out of Sydney Heads at the moment. A great effort, it's a small boat that one and full of uh, service men and women and they do it every year. They uh, ballot and get uh, their, from their army sailing club, their crew from around Australia and you earn a spot on that boat and you get to race in the Sydney Hobart. And as Jimmy described earlier, great battle between army and navy in this race. It's a great tradition. Yes, the uh, third smallest boat in the fleet and uh, it'll take a long time to get to Hobart, but good on them. Terrific effort by these crews, the service crews, to get the job done and give people training on the ocean. As we're watching now, wild oats in the foreground and then above her, Andu Kamachi working her way seaward a little. She needs to do that to keep maximum speed, what's called heating up. They've got to heat up a bit into the breeze to get better angle of attack of the wind, whereas wild oats being narrower can sail a bit lower. It's called VMG running. Velocity made good running. So at the moment, this would certainly help wild oats and blackjack. But as the day goes on, the breeze will get fresher and certainly will be an interesting battle for handicap honours as the fleet approach Tasmania. The bigger boats will certainly get in and the 60 footers and 50 footers will get in before the southwesterly change hits the bulk of the fleet and that's due on Wednesday afternoon. So some of these little boats will cop it right on the nose for about 24 hours before the wind goes back into the nor'east. So it'll give the big front runners a very quick trip to Hobart. Will they break the record? It's going to be very close I think. They've got to be there by quarter past ten tomorrow night. And the weather modelling says at the moment that Andu Comanche is due at 11 o'clock. Oh. So it's going to be very tight. And here we go. Well, this is Mel McPherson, our Channel 7 camera woman. And uh, when you put a camera person on a boat, you've actually got to get them back off. And this is how we retrieve Mel every year. Uh, she takes on this job. She loves it. It's one of the highlights of her year. So we watch her from above in the chopper to keep her safe. And the pickup boat will bring her in as well. So uh, we do everything to keep her safe and get her back on board. There she is, safely home. Well done. And very strict safety protocols around this, as is the race itself. Give us a wave, Mel. Mel's got to uh, be tracked by this boat, gets on board safely, and all's good there. But the whole race itself is all about safety and absolute paramount that the club put on top of that race. And there's Tim, another cameraman from Wild Oats in the red shirt, he's safe and sound as well. So well done as we focus now on Christian Beck's Law Connect. Can she repeat the success of 2016 when she was perpetual loyal and win this race for line It was a great sight. Tony Mutter at the helm, New Zealand yachtsman six times around the world. Twice he's won the race and Chris Dickelson, the tactician. They've done a sterling job, but starting to rumble out to windward is Andu Comanche.
pretty much all. Beautiful blue at the moment. The Rolex Sydney Hobart <coughs> continues. A colourful start, and now they are out of Sydney Heads, the entire fleet, and heading south on this great race. 628 nautical miles to reach Hobart. Early expectations, Peter Shipway, is that maybe by tomorrow night we may see a win across the line, which is incredible. Yes, yeah, certainly been before midnight tomorrow night. We're watching Law Connect. They're making 20 knots plus down this uh, down the track. There's URM, highly fancied for handicap. Strong crew aboard her. Steve Jarvin has won this race 14 times on line on us, twice on corrected time. He's aboard URM this year, and his son Sevi is one of the helms of the ball, Andrew Comanche. Also joining the crew is Jason Waterhouse on URM, two-time Olympian, silver medalist for Australia at 2016 Games. There's Maroubra Beach disappearing quickly in the distance as they're down off Botany Bay, these leaders. They are absolutely powering along these massive sails, reaching sails. You can see the size of them there as we come back in shore to Willow, Jim Cooney's boat. Volvo 70, strong crew. She will be favoured in these freshening winds tomorrow. Jim, of course, was the owner of Comanche when she broke the race record. He has two of his sons aboard. His sons, Douglas and James. Very strong crew. Andrew Cape, well-known Australian round-the-world navigator. He's in the navigator's seat. Ted Hackney, Daryl Wislang and Joey Newton, all top sailors. And here's a lie. Uh, sorry, Blackjack. We're back on Blackjack. Defending her line on his total title from last year. Sitting in second spot at the moment. There's a little connect top of screen. An amazing view, incredible sight. Money Penny, Sean Langman. Doing a little bit quicker than his son on Maluka at the moment. <laughs> That's great. You do it's one of the great things about sailing is that the number of family members that, that go through the sailing ranks to have Peter Back and Maluka. And Sean here on Money Penny. It's not uncommon. There's F1 for Formula One for Blackjack. In memory of uh, Blackjack. Jack Brabham, as we said. And there's the site that they'd be looking at from behind. Spinnakers, everyone on different courses, whether to go to Seawood and try and pick up a bit of current or sail more down the rum line, the direct line to Tasman Island. Everyone's got their own views on this and how the weather modelling works, works out. Ah, here's Whisper. David Griffith, 62 foot up. A couple of father and children combinations on board there. David has his son, uh, daughter Holly sailing and Michael Cox and the sailing master has his son Will on board. And the navigator is Grant Simmer, America's Cup winning navigator in 1983 aboard Australia 2. Very experienced crew. Tommy Braidwood is the crew boss. As we look back to Maroubra Beach and Hamilton Island Wild Oats. Some of these sail areas are just enormous. That big sail that Wild Oats has uh, got up there is 666 square metres in size. And the big sail on Comanche is 850 square metres. When you consider a tennis court, it's 195 square metres. It just gives you some idea of the size of these sails. 30 metre masts on these big boats, just incredible. No, here's no limit. Third as Voodoo in 2018 for David Goats. Very good crew, Julian Freeman and Barney Worker, 30 Hobart races each. And Tony Ellis aboard, 53 races he's done. This is his 54th race to Hobart, certainly a record. This boat could do well in these running conditions. Both Julian Freeman and Barney Walker have won this race previously. Multiple times for Barney. They'll be pushing very hard to give Whisper a very good run for her money. They're similar size boats, as is uh, URM and Muddy Penny. It's a great sight, isn't it? 109 in the fleet out there on their way to Hobart. Could get a winner in as early as tomorrow night. Stay with us, the Rolex Sydney Hobart.
closing in on the first hour of racing in the Rolex Sydney Hobart for 20 we're closing in on the first hour of racing on the Rolex Sydney Hobart for 2022 and Law Connect is your leader at the moment after a great start in Sydney Harbour. The Super Maxis as expected, the big four up the front and behind them, another 105, all heading south in beautiful conditions at the moment. Here we are on board Law Connect, triple head rig, you can see the orange storm jib, then a black jib, outside that and then outside that the big reaching code zero and they would be at 22 23 knots trying to hold pace with wild uh, with uh andu comanche both these boats working to seaward a little bit which they need to do to use their stability but a cracking pace they've set down the coast already and here's the handicap favorite caro a boat and design TP52 everyone likes this boat very very good crew she uses water ballast so that will give her a bit of advantage in the heavy running to keep the bow up but I think she will take a lot of beating if she can get round Tasman before the southwesterly hits she runs very fast she's a very good running boat smallish number of crew on board only 11 when a lot of these TPs carry about 12 or 14 crew and here's another chance, Warrior One. Successful in the recent Newport to Bermuda race. Highly qualified, Chris Sheehan at the helm. Also strongly crewed from a number of guys from all over the world who have come from different countries to come and compete in this great race south. Onto the Blackjack, who's holding down third position and then out to sea is Andu Comanche and that big reaching sail that she has up is 850 square meters in size and just look at you could see the wake off the stern of the boat how fast they're going but this breeze is starting to freshen so that'll enable them to get their bows down a little bit so we're watching there Patrice. Patrice, that's Tony Kirby's TP, another TP52 that will be enjoying these conditions. She'll keep the other TP's 52's honest. Good campaigner, Tony. He's been third in this race before. To see the white caps appearing now as the breeze starts, starts to freshen, and that's the forecast. 20 knots plus by this afternoon and beautiful conditions. And if you're ever going to do a race, this is probably the race you want to do, especially if you're on a big boat. <laughs> so the first timers will think how good and how easy is this, but I can assure you it won't always be as easy as this in the years to come. That, that's the experience of 31 races speaking right there. Um, Yacht Tracker, fantastic way to keep across these boats and where they are and what time they may finish because it will predict that for you as well. But the Sydney Hobart Yacht Tracker at www.rolexsydneyhobart.com. Uh, many of us will be glued to that for the next uh, couple of days. It's a fantastic innovation and it, it will just draw you in hour after hour. It's a brilliant thing. Looking at Crush there, she was formerly Envy Scooters who was third in 2019 but relegated on protest to sixth this boat comes from western australia she runs very well as we're watching boats that run extremely well in law connect inshore of uh andu Kamachi, who's working well east of the rum line at this very early stage at what point peter shipway do you make the move and decide we're going to go further out and chase wind further out or or is this a race where you stay closer into the coast well you work your angles what's the best speed for the boat and uh, the quickest time to get to Hobart, obviously. So the bigger boats, a bit wider, will want to work to the east a bit quicker. The narrower boats can stay a bit lower, but the, the trick will be if the breeze starts to vary, when to jibe to come back onto the rum line, which is the straight line. So they'll work their way out, and the further out you get, you probably pick up a little bit of better current. So these Law Connect and Andrew Comanche will work a little bit further to seaward than the narrower boats, as I said. So you just look at the weather, look at the wind, see if it's backing or veering. And if it starts to come more into the north, it'd be time to jibe to get back on to the rum line. But at the moment, you just it's all about speed and where your best speed is. And these two boats are fighting to put the bow up and get the better speed. And the uh, you can see Blackjack doing much the same course as Law Connect, but Hamilton Island Wild Oats further inshore. So it's all a matter of strategy, all a game at this stage, what the navigators and tacticians think. 
and so much more to unfold as well. Law Connect leading the Rolex Sydney Hobart. Hope you've enjoyed our coverage here on Seven. Great to have you with us once again. A fantastic start in Sydney Harbour. And now they are heading south. South. Keep your eye on the Yacht Tracker and we will see you again next year. Have a great night. I can't, where am I gonna go? Let me in there. Yeah, for sure. Well, Peter, get rid of that guy. Just get rid of that guy. Get the jib up. Why don't we pull the jib down, guys?